Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. La paz está con ustedes. Brothers, it is a great joy to welcome to the seminary this morning Bishop William Byrne, the bishop of the new bishop of Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, he was sitting in my office a few minutes ago, and I'm thinking, looking at him, thinking, he reminds me of somebody. And I'm thinking, on February 10th, the person that he reminds me of will be here. He is the younger version, both in size and in temperament, of Tim Dolan, <laughs> the Archbishop of New York. And come to find out, he was, Cardinal Dolan was Bishop Byrne's spiritual director for three years before he entered the seminary. What a small world. But it's good to see uh, that you have taken the best of Cardinal Dolan, which is his warmth, his joy, his humility, and his excitement. And you bring it to us this morning. And you, we're delighted to have you with us, Bishop. First of all, we congratulate you on your appointment as shepherd of the Church of Springfield. We're grateful to the Church in Springfield for the many men that have come through here. We know of your past work in vocations. He was, um, prior to becoming uh, secretary for, I think it was pastoral services in the Diocese, Archdiocese of Washington, uh, Bishop Byrne was a vocation director in the Archdiocese, and so we hope that your experience there will engender men to come to this institution and be formed as priests. But on behalf of the faculty, the staff, the seminarians, let me say to you, first of all, welcome, and secondly, thank you for saying yes to what the church is asking of you. Welcome, and I hope you'll come many times. Thank you, thank you. I hate to correct the rector, but I was not vocations director, I was a vocations producer. I've been on our formation team, and so for the uh, eight years that I was at the University of Maryland, we had 14 men enter the diocesan priesthood in, uh, and a couple became Dominicans. Uh, so thank you very much and it's great to be with you here, my brothers. Hermanos, para celebrar dignamente estos sagrados misterios, reconozcamos nuestros pecados. Tú que has sido enviado para sanar a los contritos de corazón. Señor, ten piedad. Señor, ten piedad. Tú que has venido a llamar a los pecadores. Cristo, ten piedad. Cristo, ten piedad. Tú que estás sentado a la derecha del Padre para interceder por nosotros. Señor, ten piedad. Señor, ten piedad. Dios Todopoderoso, tenga misericordia de nosotros, perdona nuestros pecados y nos lleve a la vida eterna. Oremos. God, our Creator, we give thanks to you who alone have the power to impart the breath of life. As you form each of us in our mother's wombs, grant, we pray, that we, whom you have made stewards of creation, may remain faithful to this sacred trust and constant in safeguarding the dignity of every human life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, I thank you for your faith, faithfulness and love. Lord, Lord I, I thank, thank you, you for, for your faithfulness, faithfulness and, and love. love. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing praise to you. I will worship at your holy temple. Lord, I thank you for your faithfulness and love. I will give thanks to your name, 
because of your kindness and your truth. When I call, you answer me. You build up strength within me. Lord, I thank you for your faithfulness and love. All the kings of the earth shall give thanks to you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth, and they shall sing the ways of the Lord. Great is the glory of the Lord. Lord, I thank you for your faithfulness and love. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to luke Glory to you, Lord. mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of judah where she entered the house of zechariah and greeted elizabeth when elizabeth heard mary's greeting the infant leaped in her womb and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham, and his children forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. one of my favorite gospels to read in a parish because uh, you can know it and everyone's like oh look at he's memorized the gospel they have no idea that you say it every single night for uh, for 26 years they're like wow father's amazing one thing I've learned in my very short time the 15 minutes that I've been a bishop is that you can never make anybody happy so it's right to life and then there's the row bill and the bishops make a statement uh, of which they handed to me. I had been a bishop for about 50, you know, 10 days when that happened. And then you get a letter and they're like, 
you bishops are the biggest set of losers. You don't defend the unborn. You do nothing. Why don't you speak out? You use this word when you should have said you were disgusted. And, uh, and you said, like, okay, there's one. And then I had a Zoom sort of meeting, a meet the bishop kind of thing. And in the middle of the Zoom meeting was questions. And most of the time people were asking, like, what was it like to get a call from the nuncio? And what was described that experience? And then at the end, one lady um, says, well, I don't know if I should really ask this, and, but I'm going to just muster up the courage. And she was beginning to cry, a, a woman in her 50s. And then she said, why do the bishops only care about abortion in their statements? And I realized, wow, this is, people are all over the board, and they get their information from whatever information source they get it, and it sloots and slants them one way or the other because the bishop statements have really been much more inclusive and conscious of that in the last couple of years. But as I saw her on the verge of tears and, and, and choking out these words, I thought to myself, I bet you she's post-abortive. I bet you this pain, which is not just a question that coming from like anger, but from a real place of woundedness. So there, how many people here and this is my theory. So if there's any social scientist, anybody that was a sociologist, this is a completely unscientific theory. So just put your judgment in back in the judgment bag. Because my point is, is, is not one based in statistics, but just sort of impression. So how many people here know someone who has COVID? Or has had it at any one time? So we all do, basically. So in this past year, there have been 25 million people in the United States that have had COVID. Since Roe v. Wade, there are 60-something, 60 65 million women who have had abortions. You just stop and think, we know tons of people that have been connected either by one degree or two degrees of separation to an actual abortion. They've hidden it. They have buried it down. They've lived with their shame. They've turned it into anger. More likely, they've turned it into legislation trying to justify how they have made this decision. They call it reproductive rights. Or they, but I would propose to you that we live in a post-abortive culture. We live in a culture that is drenched in people, uh, the tears and the sorrow and the blood of the unborn. And we don't know it because people don't wear uh, a scarlet letter A on their uh, thing. They don't have a card or it's not on their license plate for the most part. We see them advocating, but we think. And so if we look at that and we say, we live in a post-abortive culture, how do we preach to a post-abortive culture? How do we preach to a post-abortive culture? The first thing to remember is that when you preach, I taught uh, homiletics at the North American College for many years, and uh, Father Zwasta, I think, is one of, if, of the products of my uh, failed attempts. Uh, uh, and, um, but the, before you preach anything, people have to trust you. They have to know you. They have to believe you. It's called ethos. It's in, from classical rhetoric. And so you, if you get up on your first day before anyone knows you and try to preach, you know, a humane vitae, you, you have no credibility, you have no context in which people. But as you go along and as you do the funeral of the 16-year-old who died or the tragic, the beloved grandmother, and as you, people come to know you, you've been at their bedsides, then you can start to bring them a deeper level of, of challenge in your preaching. And so it is we talk about how do we preach in a post-abortive culture. I would suggest that the, the hard ball, the hard line, is not really the most effective. Because if people are soaked in guilt, if they're soaked in uh, misunderstanding and misinformation, I would suggest that the key is to preach mercy. That if people are sitting there thinking to themselves, which if you do any work with a post board of women or men, they sit in a church, if they attend, and they think to themselves, I'm a hypocrite. They want to stand up and say, I, I don't belong here. When we say, Lord, I'm not worthy, they really feel unworthy to be there. And part of it is the evil one whispering in their ear saying, God can't forgive you. God doesn't love you anymore. Look what you did. 
Look what you did in your decision. And so it is that if we're going to stand up and proclaim life, I think we first, to oppose the board of culture, have to preach mercy. To say to them, there is no sin that you and I can commit that God cannot forgive. That line cannot be said enough. Because as people stay away from confession, they come up with reasons, but in reality... It's the key. It's the, and once we can move beyond the pandemic and social distancing, we should be opening more opportunities for it. In every parish that I've been to, I've increased opportunities, and I have not sat in the confessional idol. People respond if you preach mercy, if you preach healing, and you preach forgiveness. And so as we celebrate life this day, I think we have to realize, as you get prepare yourselves to step into the pulpit and, and preach is to say, how are you going to touch hearts that will transform a life, that will transform a culture? And I think it begins with healing and mercy. Sure, we always will stand up for the truth. It's not as if we say, oh, I'm never going to talk about that. But it's always brought to them in the arms of a Lord that wants to heal and forgive them, no matter what they've done, no matter what we've done. Praise be Jesus Christ. And so now let us stand and offer our petitions to our Heavenly Father in the knowledge that he wants to heal and love and forgive us. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all bishops, that God may strengthen them in our church as protectors of the unborn. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For our civic leaders at all levels in this time of great unrest, May the Lord lead them to recognize the dignity of human life from conception to natural birth in their proclamations of social justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been wounded by the stain of abortion, may they be healed by the wounds of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here today and for those who may one day choose to enter priestly formation here at Pope St. John National Seminary, that we may always stand firm in our convictions to protect the unborn. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the children who have been lost to abortion and for all those who have died, may they dwell in the comfort of God's eternal rest. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those prayer requests that have been inscribed in our chapel book of intentions, for those prayers that have been entrusted to us, and for those special intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, give us the courage to stand up for the most vulnerable, in particular the unborn. Give us the mercy from you to bring healing to those wounded by the sin of abortion. We ask all this through Christ our Lord.
Oren, hermanos, para que este sacrificio mío y ustedes sea agradable a Dios Padre, Padre Todopoderoso. Accept our humble service, our offerings, O Lord of the living, and unite us to the perfect sacrifice of your Son, through whom you have made all creation new, who lives and reigns forever and ever. El Señor esté con ustedes. Levantemos el corazón. Demos gracias al Señor nuestro Dios. En verdad es justo y necesario. Es nuestro deber y salvación darte gracias siempre y en todo lugar, Señor Santo Padre, Dios Todopoderoso y Eterno pues aunque nos necesitas de nuestras alabanzas, eh, don tuyo que seamos agradecidos y aunque nuestras bendiciones no aumenten tu gloria, nos aprovechan para nuestra salvación por Cristo nuestro Señor. Por eso, unidos a los ángeles, te aclamamos llenos de alegría. Santo, 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 el Señor, Dios del universo, nos está en el cielo y la tierra, os dan en el cielo, bendito es el nombre del Señor, os dan en el cielo. Santo eres en veridad, Señor, fuente de toda santidad, por eso te pedimos que santifiques estos dones con la efusión de tu Espíritu, de manera que se convertían para nosotros en la cuerpo y la sangre, cuerpo y en la sangre de Jesucristo nuestro Señor, el cual cuando iba a ser entregado a su pasión, voluntariamente aceptada, tomó pan, dando Dándote gracias, lo partió y lo dio a sus discípulos, diciendo, Tomen y coman todos de él, porque esto es mi cuerpo, que será entregado por ustedes. Del mismo modo, acabada la cena, Tomó el cáliz y dándote gracias de nuevo, lo pasó a sus discípulos diciendo, Tomen y beben todos de él, porque esto es el cáliz de mi sangre, sangre de la alianza nueva y eterna, que será derramada para ustedes por muchos, para el perdón y de los, peca de los pecados. Hagan esto en conmemoración mía. Este es el misterio de la fe. Anunciamos de muerte o proclama. Así pues, Padre, al, al celebrar ahora el memorial de la muerte y la resurrección de tu Hijo, te ofrezcamos el pan de vida y el cáliz de salvación y te damos gracias porque nos haces dignos de servirte en tu presencia. Te veremos humildemente que el Espíritu Santo consagre a Gregorio en la unidad a cuantos participamos en el cuerpo y en la sangre de Cristo. Acuérdate, Señor, de tu iglesia extendida por toda la tierra, 
y con el Papa Francisco, con el obispo de uh, John y todos los pastores que, que cuidan de tu pueblo. Llévala a su perfección por la caridad. Acuérdate también de nuestros hermanos que se dur dur durmieron en la esperanza de la resurrección y de todo lo que ha muerto en tu misericordia. Admítelos a contemplar la luz de tu rostro. Ten misericordia de nosotros, de todos nosotros. Y así con María, la Virgen Madre de Dios, su esposo San José, los apóstoles y cuantos vivieron en tu amistad a través de, de los tiempos, merezcamos por tu Hijo Jesucristo compartir la vida eterna y cantar tus alabanzas. Por Cristo con él y en él, a ti Dios Padre Omnipotente, en la unidad del Espíritu Santo, todo honor y toda gloria por los siglos de los siglos. Fieles a la recomendación del Salvador y siguiendo tu divina ciencia, nos atrevemos a decir, Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino, hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día, Perdona nuestras ofensas, como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. Y no nos deje caer en tentación y la del mal. Líbranos de todos los males, Señor, y concédanos la paz en nuestros días, para que, ayudados por tu misericordia, vivamos siempre libres de pecado y protegidos de todos perturbación mientras esperamos amos, la gloria venida de nuestro Salvador Jesucristo. Tuyo es el reino, tuyo es el poder, tu gloria por siempre, Señor. Señor Jesucristo, que dijiste a tus apóstoles, la paz les dejo, mi paz les doy. No tengas en cuenta nuestros pecados, sino de la fe de la iglesia. Y conforme a tu palabra, concédele la paz y la unidad. Tú que vivas y reinas por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. La paz del Señor esté siempre con ustedes. Este es el Cordero de Dios que quita el, el, el pecado del mundo. Dichosos los invitados a la cena del Señor. Señor, no soy de mí, entras en mi casa, pero una palabra tuya bastará para sanarme.
with the head down. Just put her on the chair. El cuerpo de Cristo, amen. El cuerpo de Cristo. Let us pray. Increase your love within us, Lord God, by the saving mysteries we have celebrated, and bring people everywhere to respect your gift of human life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just to any of the native speakers here, I apologize <laughs> for what was supposed to be a Spanish-speaking Mass. I practice with our deacon. But it's a valuable lesson. I think you need to be, as a priest, unembarrassable. People want to have the Mass, and if you chop it up, they're happier with that than you're not. So push yourself in, in to do it, because it's not easy, but uh, as your wise rector says, do it anyway. <laughs> Let's see. I guess we'll just do the regular blessing. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Pueden ir en paz. Muchas gracias. I think I did that backwards.
¿Vale?